Hi, welcome to Sue Marie P. My name's Sue, and many of you know I like baking with spelt flour. And I've been experimenting with trying to do a new spelt bread recipe that's jam-packed full of fiber, no yeast, easy, bake it from a cold oven. So this is my new spelt bread recipe. I've done it with whole grain spelt flour, and I've added sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds, but you can do it without. So if you'd like to see how to make this new spelt bread, Come with me and let's see. So to make it easier, I've measured everything out so I can just whip it all together and show you how I do it. So I like using scales for making bread because then it's accurate no matter where you are in the country because cup sizes vary from the UK to Australia and to America. So in this large bowl here, I've got 500 grams of whole grain spelt flour now I have done this with a combination of white spelt or um, half and half, just depending on what I've got in the cupboard. So I'm going to pop in all the dry ingredients together. So I've got one teaspoon of salt and you can salt to taste. I'm doing one tablespoon of psyllium husk. That's kind of the magic thing that you use which adds fibre and you don't need the yeast. I've got a tablespoon of flax, ground flax seeds, which I just like adding for extra fiber, and a tablespoon of baking powder. Now I haven't tried making this without the baking powder, if you're asking me, um, or if you're gonna ask me. Um, so I'm going whisking those together. And I like adding extra seeds to my bread just to give it a bit of texture um, and crunch but feel free to leave these out. Today, I'm not even bothering toasting them before I pop them in. So I've got a quarter of a cup of pumpkin seeds, which is about 40 grams, and 65 grams or a half a cup of sunflower seeds. But if seeds aren't your thing, just don't pop, pop them in. Just got my little computer here with my notes, so I'm just scrolling it up. Okay, so I've also got on the dry ingredients baking soda, but we're gonna do that right at the end. So in this um, jug here, I've got 500 mils of water, but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to add it all at once. I'm just going to add some of it and just gauge by eye whether I need it. I'm going to add a little bit of sweetener. This is optional. I haven't got maple syrup at the moment. I've got this liquid syrup from Sweden. Um, you can leave it out. You can add regular sugar. You can add honey if, it's, if you're not trying to be vegan or you're not on a vegan diet. And I should have added the oil first because then the syrup is easier to get off. A little tip. Add the oil first and then add your liquid sweetener because then the liquid sweetener glides off. And I've got oil here. I'm going to add three tablespoons of olive oil. And you can swap this out for any other oil just as long as it's a little bit of a neutral one. Let's mix all that with my spatula. Add some more water. And this is warm water. I often use just the filtered water of about oh, 400 grams. And then I add a little bit of um, kettle water. So it becomes a nice kind of lukewarm temperature. And I'm just splashing my water everywhere as I'm talking. If you've clicked on for the first time, welcome. I love baking with spelt flour. I like doing buckwheat flour as well. And I like experimenting with some more gluten-free flours. I do some easy no-bake sweet treats. So I do a little bit of everything, but I like doing things that I like to eat, and then I share them. And I do two videos a week, so if you're new here today, consider subscribing. All you need to do is just um, have an account, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell, because then you get told when we get a little notification when I have a new video. Okay. Now into that, I've, going to, I've got some vinegar here, just to help give it some air as well. The vinegar kind of helps. So I'm just going to grab, I like to do it a little bit separate from that so I can mix it. So I'm going to put a tablespoon of vinegar and you can grab white vinegar, you can use apple cider vinegar. And then I've got some bicarb soda here. And I'm going to just do half a teaspoon of that. And that creates this kind of bubbly mixture. And I'm just going to add that into my bread mix. 
the vinegar and the bicarb soda also help give it some kind of aeration or lightness. Just a tiny bit more water. And if you, um, I don't know if I mentioned, if you didn't want to put the seeds in, you might have to put a little bit more flour in just to balance the, the thickness. Now, you're not going to get a thick dough like a regular dough, but it's not going to be a cake batter. So it's kind of this loose. I've got kind of this loose mixture here, just if you can see that. going to move some things aside and pour it into my tin. So I think I've got about 50 mils of water left. I thought you might like to see a close up. So I've got my small loaf tin here. I've greased it with butter and I've lined it with paper and I leave it long on the sides here and I've just clipped it over with these little bulldog clips just so the paper doesn't flap over my bread. And I'm going to pour all of this into that tin. It's got a little spatula here. I'm smoothing it down just so it's even. Now you can add more seeds or decoration to the top because we like to toast it. I find that the seeds um, fall off in the toaster. So I'm just leaving it plain today. But what I like to do is to give it some air as it's baking. Just press the knife into the center. And I'm going to cover it with foil. So I'm going to bake it from a cold oven, starting at 180 degrees with a fan, or that's 200 without a fan. I'll pop some other Fahrenheit temperatures above. Covered it with foil for the first 35 minutes. And then after 35 minutes, I'm going to release that. This will just ensure that it doesn't rise too quickly and I get a hard crust. And I'm going to pop a little ramekin of water to the base for steam. So this is my little ramekin, I just add tap water. So the bread's all cooked. I took the foil off at about 35 minutes. You know, I could, probably could have left it on for another extra 10 minutes. Um, it has got a little bit of a crunchy crust, but I think it's gonna be okay. Let me chop into it and have a look. It's still a bit warm, so I've just made it crumble on one side. <laughs> Check that out. Look, it's quite a dense loaf because I've added all the seeds and the fiber from the flax and the um, psyllium husk, but it's beautiful toasted. We usually toast it twice so you get a nice um, finish on it. Give it a go and let me know in the comments below what you think of my new spelt bread without any yeast, no knead, just in one bowl. And I hope you enjoy it. And I'll pop a few other spelt recipes up above. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.